Well, you're just the coolest. I am the coolest. I wish I could do that a little bit. Pointer shots live. That's the best way to live your life. Yeah, that is the best way to say it. And my Cruella de Vil shot glass. <laughs> okay, well, all right. Well, let's see. Let's see what we're doing here. Are we live live? Like, are we live right yeah, now? live live. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Whiskey Cinema. I'm your host, Dan O'Holsworth. With me, as always, Brandon Witch. Not with me, as always, is Jordan the Juggernaut Eames. He had to call him sick today. He wasn't feeling his best. Uh, he will be missed. It what had nothing to do with the popular poll that wanted to get rid of him, guys. So stop saying that. It's mean. It has nothing to do with that. I voted against getting rid of him. Oh, see, that's nice. Hey, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Well, yeah. Hey, man, how you doing? Happy Valentine's Day. I hope it's awesome for you. Yeah, I don't know if my wife is too impressed that, you know, I did a podcast on Valentine's Day, but it's Eddie Murphy, you know? It's Eddie Murphy. Well, I was going to say, is she not impressed because you're doing one or because our topic's Eddie Murphy instead of, like, romance movies? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we let it out of the bag. Today, we are talking about the one, the only, the... I mean, forever in my life, probably, Eddie Murphy. Well, he's forever in my life. He did Shrek. Come on. Come okay. On. We don't, there's other movies he did. He didn't just do Shrek. Hey, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm actually excited for this. There's actually both of my favorite stand-up specials of his, Delirious and Raw on Netflix. So I started watching them, and... Uh, I don't know why, but some people forget where people come from. Like, they forget Steve Martin was a stand-up. They forget Robin Williams was a stand-up. These guys all started by selling out these big stadiums. Not as big as Kevin Hart, but these guys were huge, huge stand-up uh, moguls. And then they started jumping into these kind of family-friendly movies, and you kind of forget that. But, uh, man, both those uh, specials are on there, and I watched them both. I, I still like them. I still had a great time watching them. I watched them. I watched them this week. I love him. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I think we should start with uh, Eddie Murphy, the stand-ups, at least talk about him a little bit. Uh, for one thing, definitely can tell it's not cancel culture back then. You can yes. tell right away with like his first two jokes where he talks about how funny gays are. And wouldn't that be crazy if Mr. T was gay? I think that was like his opening joke. Yeah, he had an opening joke where I was like, yeah, that's. That's one of those things you ain't getting away with now. No. <laughs> I he mean... Pretend, he, he pretends to be gay. I laugh my <laughs> ass off. I ain't gonna lie. I laugh my ass off. You know you made it in stand-up yeah. when people dress up as you as Halloween from your stand-up. Right? That dude's wearing red leather. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a different time. Although, I guess everything's coming back, you know? So, eventually, I'll be wearing that every day. Red leather? Get it. Damn Hello. right. Looking like Eddie Murphy. Just a little lighter. I wonder if people would even say anything or if they'd just be so used to like craziness. They're like, okay, there's there's a guy in red leather pumping his gas. I don't want to talk to him. It might be crazy. You know, everybody's got something to say. Everybody's started a podcast these days because they got something to say. Ugh. You know what they call a group of podcasts? White people. That's what they call them now. <laughs> white people with white problems. I didn't like that movie. I walked out of the theater. <laughs> uh, this episode, by the way, is brought to you by The Buzz. Make sure you check that out. That is our parent company that hosts our podcast and a bunch of other podcasts that we are friends and family with. And they also have a bunch of articles up to date on sports and entertainment, which we constantly share and talk to them about. One cool news that I saw is they're thinking about doing Jared Leto in The Killing Joke with Ben Affleck, which I was like, that's pretty cool. Even my brother, who's not a big nerd, is like, that's interesting. I was like, yeah. Even people that aren't like comic book nerds are like, dude, let's, is it going to be good? Let me know. Well, apparently we have to watch the new Justice League movie to see how good Jared Leto is as Joker. I mean, I like Jared Leto a lot. Whenever I'm on social media, is Jared Leto Joker. I, mean, I don't know. We'll see. He, well, I, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to judge him. I'm a fan of his. Judging. That's what we have a podcast for is literally to judge shit. I'm just saying. I don't I, I don't want to be the guy. Everyone I know believed in Heath Ledger as Joker after he was great as it. But before then, I couldn't find one guy that believed in Brokeback Mountain as a good Joker before he got there. They were pissed. Well, that was his prequel, man. <laughs> yeah. That was before he got there. That, that's what drove him loony to Why do I got these cars? 
<laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal's huge. <laughs> um, if you guys are watching this, by the way, make sure you click in the box and you comment with us. We can see your comments. We have a couple people checking in, which is very, very cool. And, uh, dude, I'm... I'm excited for some Eddie Murphy. I didn't mean to jump off on a Jared Leto tangent. Please don't Gina Carano me and cancel me from this podcast. I'm I'm willing to stick to the script. <laughs> Karen Dune is done. She done. You know, I was bummed. You're canceling your action figures. I, was, I mean, I assumed that was a little bit of money right there. Getting an action figure canceled? That's bad. Yeah, I saw the action figure too. It made me laugh because it looked pretty good. I mean, I'm an action figure guy. I don't know if you can tell. Sure. There's one there. There you go. Yeah. All right, let's get into some of it. We're going to talk about some of our overrated, underrated, favorite, and least favorite of Eddie Murphy. And man, there is a lot to choose from for sweet old, dear old Eddie Murphy. I mean, I'm. You know what I mean? Is there. Is there? I, I mean, there's I really so. only two movies to choose from, right? And one's a sequel to the other one. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! 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 Why no! no. We're not just, just, why don't we just do it? There's other All things right, to I'll talk start. about besides Shrek. Start. It's Shrek's. Yes, <laughs> Shrek's. No. I don't put one above the other. Come on, man! You can't just talk about <laughs> Shrek the entire podcast. I can. I started no. a podcast with Shrek and Heart. <laughs> I'm mean, a talks about Shrek. Okay. Yeah, just talk. No, Shrek. Yeah, let me check my papers real quick. Let's see. This week, Eddie Murphy. Next week, John Lithgow. Then we're going to be talking about Cameron Diaz. Diaz. <laughs> It'll be easy on all of them. I mean, I can talk a little bit more about John Lithgow than I will be able to about Cameron Diaz. Yeah. I'm a big fan yeah. of Lithgow. I love Lithgow. Oh, I... He's... I mean, Third Rock from the Sun. I love that show. Dude in the Crown is uh, Winston Churchill, and uh, I mean, I could name a hundred things. Dexter is the Trinity Killer. I love John Lithgow Dexter's a lot. The Trinity Killer is the peak. He's great. He's good in everything he does. He'll do. He's there's a couple guys that will be like a crazy killer, a sadistic murderer who like goes through and enjoys killing people and seeing their last breaths leave their body, and then they'll also play a dad in the next movie. That's really loving and caring and helping. John Lithgow. John Lithgow. I think we should make that an adjective. That guy totally Lithgowed right now. He's a Lithgow. Check out his Lithgow. Mm, no. Make it happen. I mean, you, Let's you, get you, it. You trying? You trying hard? Good. good I'll get there. You. Don't you worry about it. We'll hashtag that mother trucker. The most effort I've ever seen out of you. Hey, there you go. Ever. <laughs> we got a couple people checking in. We got John saying, "What's up, y'all?" And uh, Amanda, what's up, guys? Jordan's checking in. Uh, Jordan, our co-host, who is checking via comments, where you guys go ahead and feel free to leave all the hate you want for him. Or, I know he also loves Shrek. Okay, we can't just keep circling back to Shrek. Yeah, yes, I just wanted you to know, man. It's my best movie, Shrek. Do you just? Okay, do you want to just? though, there is no, there is no third or fourth. Fuck those ones. It's like any other okay. four. Okay, well, uh, you know what? Shut up, Danny. So anyway, my <laughs> underrated is also Shrek's. No, no. You can't make everything Shrek. I didn't. My overrated is not Shrek's or Warhammer. Well, okay. <laughs> Great, I guess. Fantastic. Do you want to start with bother the listing those because I didn't think we'd have time to really get to those after we started with Best and Shrek. Oh, we're not... Donkey? I get it. Donkey's fantastic. Donkey! All right. <laughs> we'll just start with our favorite. I mean, you shouldn't do I that. I did start with my favorite. <laughs> I literally started with Shrek. I'm going to end with Shrek as well. What? What do you Spoiler mean? Spoiler alert. This show is about Shrek. No! We have lots of other things to talk about. Because I'm not what talking about Pluto Nash. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, Pluto Nash is bad, but it is not his worst movie. It's definitely not Shrek. <laughs> okay, <laughs> dude, I can't. I can't keep trying to talk about Shrek. Uh, I know this is done. What's great about Shrek, Danny, is you don't have to try about it. It's natural. Just follow your heart, man. I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to talk about That's this. That's your problem. Shrek. 
You got to embrace Shrek. I mean, can we not embrace Shrek? I mean, oh, I have does... embraced him. Oh, God, Jesus. All right, well, I'm going to move in to uh, someone who I'd missed love it. I love with Shrek and Donkey. No. <laughs> in the morning, he's making waffles. No, no, no. <laughs> We're not doing this, Brandon. God damn it. We're not doing this. I do love waffles, though. Did you have me at waffles? Um, Everybody's saying Shrek, man. Shrek. Hey, More Shrek. See? You are really pushing this podcast into a Shrek podcast. He has like 19 movies. Shrek He's cinema. Ed- Let's just rename it. No. <laughs> Come in with like. Because I'll give him that. And the Shrek. crazy ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on the whiskey barrels, man. <laughs> oh, no. No way. You do that podcast with Eames. You do your. your uh, <laughs> Shrek Extential. Shrek, Shrek Scape? Yeah. I don't know what you would call it. You know, if you embraced Shrek, you would have been able to think of something. And By the way, I don't know what, what you're drinking. I'm drinking an old-fashioned, and I was in a bit of a hurry. So this podcast might get a little a little more sloppy as we go here. I'm drinking an old-fashioned Dr. Pepper Fireball. It's an old-fashioned. We call it a Whiskey yeah. Sunrise on some podcasts. I want to get um, in the one that John mentioned before we get too far into Shrek, which is uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. All right, you're going to let me. Good. So I want to talk about <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop. Eddie Murphy. Dun, 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 dun. Iconic. It's iconic music. Yeah. I mean, it's 80s music, right? And Very it much like uh, the rest of them. Cat the on the keyboard with its crazy arms. arms. <laughs> yeah. Beverly Hills Cop, it's good. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, even with the week here, I was like, nah. I don't love it. I think it's good. It's very USA Today. Like, they bought the yeah. rights to it and they play it all the time. Um, I would watch that before I'd watch Face Off. Yeah, Face Off is rough. What they said they're going to make a sequel to? Hey, hey, is- hey. Face Off Come is on. It's a shitty movie, but God. <laughs> it certainly is. Good. It's really hard. It's really hard to. I talked to somebody and they really just really hard to not turn the channel. <laughs> That's <pretty rough. laughs> But Beverly Hills Cop, I liked the sequels. I liked they were fun. When they said they're going to make more of them, uh, making a fourth one that they had signed him on to do, which essentially kind of got shelved. I don't think that it's in production. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, last time I- he's making a sequel to Coming to America. You know, twenty years That's later. Now. Yeah, March 15th, man. So where Beverly Hills Cop for me is, is like you said, it's an 80s cop movie. He's a loose cannon. He plays by his own rules, breaking and entering. Fun movie. I'm not falling for a man on the tailpipe. Fun movie. Coming to America, to me, is my favorite of his movies. I love Coming to America. That's still not Shrek? It's not Shrek, man. It's yeah. not Shrek. <laughs> Listen, man. It's not I, love, I love American. I'm excited for the second. Even 20 okay. years later, or whatever. All right. But Shrek. But Shrek. No, I don't want to talk about Shrek. Every time I mention a different movie, I don't want you to mention Shrek. I don't want it. Then I don't know why we're doing this podcast. Okay, you should just know <laughs> that we're talking about other things, man. All right, I want to talk a little bit. I mean, okay, Shrek. Let's talk about Shrek. Let's get it out. I can well, tell hold you. On. Don't ignore our comments. Jesus Christ, dude. Go ahead. Uh, Amanda comment. mentioned Doctor Doolittle. Doctor Doolittle. First one was not bad. Liked it. With the horse voiced by Norman as well. Yeah. One yep. of the nineties comedic stars that didn't really pan out. And Chris sure. Rock. Chris Rock. I mean. Hey, uh, oh, I like the name Lucky. Uh, it works both ways. Hi, I'm Lucky. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I really like Dr. Doolittle. I watched this, actually, this week. I watched this movie over Beverly Hills Cop. I'm not saying it's better, but it is. Oh. Yeah, I'll say it's fine. It's a family movie. It's very much different, and I think that was in, like, 1994. Um, just kind of aged better. A horse that needed glasses. I mean, it's silly, but out of the two Dr. Doolittle, clearly that's better than RDJ's. Clearly. Oh, I saw RDJs. That even go fuck itself. Yeah, pretty rough. That's like Pluto and Ash bad. Yep. <laughs> that was bad. Not. But I, why though, right? Like, it's a no for me, dog. I love some RDJ, but it's a no for me, dog. Jesus. You had no comedy in this movie that was made for kids, 
and you try to make and it smart for stand up comedians and shit as the voices. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, not, not doing it. I'm a fan of stand up comics and I've seen movies just because they're in it. I'm like, oh, fuck, I love this guy. Ah, oh, he's awesome. Mark Norman, I met this guy. Oh, that's cool. And I watch movies and I'm like, ugh. Why can't they ever transfer? If there's like five guys, one being Eddie Murphy, that made it to screen and then just figured it out immediately. Started making a bunch of movies. Yeah. He killed it back in the 80s and 90s. It was his time. He was in the 2000s? And then the 2000s came and he, went. <laughs> he went. I mean, he went. It was rough. Did you get Shrek, uh, right? All right, we just need to talk about Shrek. I can't keep going back to that's a boulder. That's a nice boulder. I can't keep going back to Shrek. <laughs> I like with that Donkey. Boulder. We need to just uh, also Eddie Murphy and the Sheep. Liked it. That was one of the biggest complaints they had about the the live action one that they made was no Mushu, and he was a very lovable character. Um, and I agree with him. I love Mushu. I thought he was great. Yeah, Mushu was awesome. Mushu's every Disney side character. Great. <laughs> Dishonor on you, dishonor on your girl. <laughs> yeah, that one. I really like that one. I'll uh, I'll do that as an honorable mention as best. But Shrek's also get it. <laughs> Why? Why? I think Why? what do they do in the new movie? They put a phoenix in or some shit. A phoenix? What do you mean? Yeah, I don't remember. Some bird thing instead of a cool dragon. It was I a phoenix. Know, I, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think yeah. Said. My bad. I thought you were talking about the I city. You I had a hard time paying attention to that movie. It was a rough one for me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's no, not do a little bad, but. Well, I'll tell. Let's talk about our worst. You want to talk about the worst movies? Because I know you won't bring up Shrek. Let's talk about the don't 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 do it. I see you partially opening up your mouth. Don't start. Don't start. You go first. About... I'll go first. Okay. Okay, I want to talk about Meet Dave. Track which three. Was... What? Oh, mm. <laughs> I thought we had the same one. Yep, we more Shrek. <laughs> Shrek all the time. For me, it was Meet Dave. Uh, for me, that was all where right. he hit a pinnacle of uh, give up, much like uh, Love Guru with Mike Myers, oh. and a couple movies where you see Cat these. Hat with Mike Myers. At least that one was more doable. Or they had some funny parts. Meet Dave to me was really them trying really hard. Uh, Gabrielle Union's in this, who I think is actually pretty funny. But man, I, I all of their very pushed and and uh, just forced jokes in this seem pretty harsh. If you guys don't know, it's about I mean a bunch of people living in a fake body, little people, kind of like uh, Inside Inside Out. Yeah, is that the convert conversion? Yeah, it's like that. When they're operating a body, they're trying to make them look normal, and they hit haywire buttons and levers, and it's silly, and they're trying to act like a human. And uh, hilarity doesn't ensue. <laughs> you ain't wrong. I never I never tried watching that movie. The trailer looked it. dumb enough. I watched some bad movies he did already, like Pluto Nash. Was it A Thousand Pluto Words? Nash. Yes, yeah, I forgot about that one. I was about one. to shit on Daddy Daycare, but I actually enjoyed that movie. Daddy Daycare, that was him, and was it Jeff Garland in that? Or was he in the sequel? Yep. Who? Jeff Garland. Yeah. That movie wasn't bad. Like a movie no, made for kids. Not bad. Where he joked like, I missed. What happened? I missed. What'd you miss? Walks in the toilet, and he's like, oh, 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 and he's just staring at the ceiling. So funny. Eddie Murphy's funny, man. I feel like I wish he would get back more into these kind of like dumb comedic roles. I'm glad he's doing Coming to America. I was afraid he's just going to try to stick to these like drama roles or these kind of things. You're funny. Be funny. That's what you need to do. Yeah, he's definitely not good at acting, but he brings the humor. I mean, you love him as Donkey. He won't stop bringing up Shrek. God, that's fair. But you know what? His voice acting is on par. With what? With Daniel Day Lewis of voice acting. <laughs> um, Ames, our lovely co-host who died, says God rest his soul. best is Mulan. He's hitting us from the afterlife. His worst is my worst. His Norbit. Which is? Norbit. Norbit. How are you doing? Movie, man. Movie's great. <laughs> How hard is that I movie to watch? I watched it once. I was like, yeah, this movie was horrible. 
few years mm-hmm. down the road, like maybe I've matured, maybe I haven't, but I don't know. I feel like I need to give this movie another shot. I hated myself sure. even more. Fuck that movie. <laughs> it duped me. It yeah. got me. I feel like I think uh, Dave Chappelle talks about this that like if you're a really funny, strong, well doing black actor, for some reason they want to dress you up to be a big fat woman. I don't know what it is. But they've done it like five times to different actors. Martin Lawrence did it. Tyler Perry's made a living off of it. For some reason, than any more because he directs his movies. Well, right? I mean, but why is that a thing? You never see a, a white guy play a big fat white woman. Why is it such a other thing? Um, you know, I don't know. They do it better, I guess. I don't I'm just it's weird. Why does no one talk about how weird that is? Jackie Chan as Miss Peng. And she's yelling and cursing. I would and see throwing. that, first of all. I would love it. It's just him in a fat suit dressed as an old woman, flipping and karate kicking people. Hell yeah. Ooh, now you're talking, actually. I wouldn't <laughs> mind seeing like a front flipping like 600 pound woman. That'd be kind of cool. That's right. Him at the uh, retirement home just fighting old bitches, <laughs> cheating at bridge. I hope my wire is <laughs> um yeah but that's a weird thing I, I honestly think that's i don't know if he blew up too big or whatever happened to him but at some point late 90s he kind of hit his peak and after there you hit a lot of his worst his little like his rough movies so mine was meet dave for me that was like wow he's to me he's not even the same person the same guy that did delirious did this that did uh you know all these hilarious um, movies that I've grown up and loved and watched and quote all the time. Did this movie? I'm like, wow, something's going on. This is weird. You know, sometimes you just got to do it for the money. And that's what he did with uh, Norbit. He did it for the money. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Hop from the where? He also is doing like a crazy racist Asian guy, which. Like I said, flew really well in the late 80s, early 90s. Coming to America has a couple characters like that. Super funny. Really liked his old Jewish bar- bartender guy who sits in there and plays checkers or something. Funny. Super funny. This, I'm like, man, people are getting canceled over like tweets from like 10 years ago. Apparently, they don't care about old roles that people have done. No, man. He's Eddie Murphy. They laugh. Okay. You make them laugh, you're forgiven. I mean... Can't be mad that's if you how, laugh. That's how I was raised. <laughs> how I am. No one's it's mad at me. Problem. I was making a laugh. Everybody's mad at me. I'm not that funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a Nutty Professor is one also where he dresses up, and I actually really like that movie. Nutty Professor is good. I think they made they make two or three after that. Same kind of idea. He gets one that works. Ooh, and like, Hercules, Hercules. I mean, just another one. They're like, hey, we found this guy's niche. He's just going to be in a fat suit as these different characters. He's going to dress up as every character in the movie. It'll help save on the budget. I like uh, Jack Black in Tropic Thunder, where his actor character essentially is Eddie Murphy in that universe. And he's like called The yeah, Fart. It didn't work well when a white guy did it. See? I don't know where. Yeah, they can't. It's just, it has Even to be. In a fake movie, in a movie, he couldn't make that movie work. That's right. People are laughing at me. They're just laughing at my thoughts. He just wants to be a serious actor, man. That's it. He is, and he's voicing Claptrap. Good for you, buddy. Borderlands movie. Claptrap. That's a serious role. Good for you. You got this, JB. <laughs> hey, he, he needs something, too. Without Jumanji, his recent track record is not too great. How dare you? Tenacious D will probably have a new movie soon. And I, for one, will be excited. Yeah, I'm not that excited. I've been listening to their new music a little bit. I mean, it's not as good. <laughs> doesn't it? Doesn't what hit that tenacious D standard. Jesus Christ! How dare you? Although I do love his YouTube videos. Yeah, he's really funny. <laughs> dude, man, he's doing Such WAP a on like a half pipe in like a Thor outfit with someone spraying a garden hose over him. That was pretty funny. <laughs> That's right. Uh, that's Daniel's the, uh, on here. That's the most turned on I've been during the walk. <laughs> um, who could blame you? Daniel's on here. Uh, he's asking too about uh, Life, which is a movie where he worked with Martin Lawrence, who he's teamed up, I think, a couple of times with. Uh, Life is one of those movies that is not great, 
and not terrible. It's a weird in the middle where you're like, well, I'll watch it if it's on, but I'll never be really, ex- I'll never rent it. I'll never buy it. But if it's on, I might watch it for like 30, 40 minutes. I never watched it again. And it wasn't because I hated the movie. Mm-hmm. I just didn't love the movie. Yeah. It's just, it was just another movie to me that I watched. Didn't feel like I wasted my time, but it was whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you on that one. He has a couple of movies that are like that, but there are a couple of his that are oddly good rewatchable, at least for me. Uh, the weirdest one was Vampire in Brooklyn with Wes Craven. Have you seen that one? Uh, it's been years since I've seen that one. Okay, so here's my favorite thing about it. Uh, my favorite part about it is in this movie, uh, essentially it's Dracula told as a black Dracula that comes to the Bronx from that kind of story. The reason why I love it is Wes Craven was trying to get out of horror movies. He wanted to go to comedies. So he's like, I'll hire Eddie Murphy. At the same time, Eddie Murphy says, I want to prove I'm a great actor. I'm not going to do any more comedies. So in the movie, and I, it only makes sense when you hear that fact. As you watch it, it starts off kind of funny and has like, oh, this is the pace and the humor. Then it gets super dark out of nowhere and super aggressive. And if you watch it, Wes Craven's like, I asked him to redo this take like 20 times and he refused. So you have all these kind of like arcs that go up. He's like, yeah, now act like you're spitting out her blood because it tastes bad. He's like, no, I'd rather rip her throat out. And you're like, Jesus. So it just really, they couldn't find a balance. And it's just so obvious in Vampire in Brooklyn. But that's one of those ones, man. If it's on, I'm going to watch it. I got to hear some of the jokes. I got to see his little Renfield who has pieces falling off. I mean, it's it's just so weird. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I won't watch it. I'll go to the, the USA Network. Yep. I'll turn on, you know, Nutty Professors. That shit's always on USA, too. Dude, US. I don't know how USA bought, like, the rights to these movies. I, you know, if you have a bomb, call up USA. USA's going to put you on for 23 hours a day. The other hour is going to be Con Air. So you've got a lot of time. Okay. <laughs> got to get that Con Air in. Uh, Golden Child, I actually... I tried watching that movie when I was young. I never finished it. I think maybe wasn't into it then. Should have watched it this week, but I, I chose not to. I chose to binge Shrek. Uh, we talked about on this podcast a couple of times. I'm not going to even acknowledge it. Uh, that uh, when the theaters or the studios, pardon me, see an idea for a movie, they immediately green light another movie of the same idea. We've talked about it a couple of times. Yep. Big Trouble Little China came out. They immediately as like a guy that doesn't want to be part of a prophecy in the Middle East and saving somebody and wizards and spells and monsters and all this stuff, they immediately greenlit uh, The Golden Child, which is like the same story, the exact same story. So it's like, if you like one, you'll like the other one. I like them both. Kurt Russell is awesome. Big Trouble in China. But I think uh, The Golden Child to me is one of those movies I would put as like an underrated movie, but it's not my underrated movie. But I would put it as an underrated movie you should see and try out. It's not my underrated movie either. Yeah, good. All right. Yeah, we're good. doing well. We're doing great. Yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> um, also, Trading Places brought up. Trading Places is my underrated movie that you guys oh, should weird. go watch. Because it's not mine. It's my overrated movie. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, why would you say it's overrated? Because it's not as good as the reviews say and the people think. Oh, see, let's go. Let's start a debate, buddy. Let's start a debate. Why don't you like it? What's, what's not good about Dan it? What Aykroyd, should they do? Mostly, I don't think Dan Aykroyd does much to make me believe that he should be that character. Okay. As a rich Eddie white Murphy's guy? Funny. Eddie Murphy's in his prime. Yeah. He's really good. But the rest of the movie, not, not, I'm not vibing with it. I don't hate the movie by any means. It's one of those things where I don't hate the movie. I think it's a good movie. I don't think it's as good. Well, I mean, I, I'm going dis- to I'm going to disagree only because I know. at the time of GameStop stocks right now, where everyone's saying like, "Oh, I'll buy orange juice." Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Now. Buy, buy, buy. And it's all the stocks going up and down for that kind of stuff. I've seen nothing but memes about buying orange juice concentrate and getting files and folders and moving it. And I was like, wow, that's right. I forgot about that. And Eddie Murphy pretending he has no legs and kind of like pretending he's blind. And he's like, that my vase? And he's smashing it. I, I love Trading Place. I think that's really good. That's my underrated. If you haven't seen that, 
I'm bummed that we are, are at such odd ends on this, that we're just at different places. I'm not. We I'm used to you being wrong, bro. I'm used to it. To you wrong 24-7. Shrek's not even your best movie. <laughs> you wrong, which should have been. I said it was my honorable mention. I, it can't be. It can't be Shrek, buddy. It can't be Shrek for it me. Fucking can be unless it's Mulan. Who's your what? answer, bro? For me, I mean, no. For it's you, no. you're wrong. I mean, wrong. Trading Places is overrated, and Shrek is his best movie. Unless you want to talk Mulan. No, I, I mean, you want. Let's get in the best wrong. movie then. Let's get in the best. Yeah, I did. It's Shrek. I, I mean, do we, about that? <laughs> do we have a commercial we should go to right now, actually? And then we can get to our best. And we talked about our worst. We still got to talk about our... We talked about overrated. No? That's okay. You can say no. it. No. Yeah, we talked about it for the podcast. No. Well, I don't Listen, know if you fixed it. Stop, stop shaking. Do whatever you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I'm nervous. You usually are. <laughs> it's my beauty. <laughs> Uh, Eddie Murphy has a bunch, uh, for me, one that I think is overrated, despite how hard he worked on it for me is Harlem Nights, the one with Richard Pryor. Um, I'm not mad at his hustle, director, producer, star, co-writer, did it with his brother, Charlie Murphy. Um, but for me, I don't consider his best work. Boomerang is in the same kind of vein as that one. I like Boomerang. Very overrated for me. I thought about putting that one as overrated. I thought it was good, uh, but when I see people telling me you need to watch this, I'm like, I don't uh, though. You don't. You don't. The great, the best acting he's ever done is pretending like Halle Berry wasn't the most beautiful woman in that movie from the get. <laughs> he's like, "Ooh, I want this other girl." I was like, "But do you? I mean, you're not even trying to hide Halle Berry, really. You're just like, oh, this is her in a jacket. You better hide her a little bit better than that for me to think she's frumpy. She frumpy. She frumpy." That was funny. I was watching it and I was just like, oh, damn, Halle Berry's in this? I was like, she must be the love interest. He's like a player. And then he's after another girl. He's just ignoring her. I was like, I mean, his eyes still work, though. That's not how things go. He should at least talk yeah, to sometimes her. Sometimes it's not just about looks. It's about what's on the inside. How will you connect with the person? Inside, she was Halle Berry, too. There was no, like, it wasn't mm -hmm. like a big right. face. You're right. <laughs> Um, yeah, to me, that was like overrated for me. Boomerang was uh, Harlem Nights. I liked Harlem Nights, but they talk like it is a masterpiece. And just to me, it wasn't. I mean, I think my favorite is not that at all. So I don't know how you feel about it, but that's how I feel. Um, I don't remember Harlem Nights, to be honest. I do remember Boomerang a little bit. It wasn't huge. So if you compare it to Boomerang, I ain't watching it. Oh, yeah, I got some guys. Uh, John sitting on us, too. Boomerang was overrated. Oh, and Showtime. I forgot about Showtime. That's another USA one. I actually like Showtime. That and I Spy with Owen Wilson. Yes, the same kind of buddy comedies that he does. Exactly. That's yeah. the exact same like, one movie. Them, one of their spies, one of their cops. The and then the other one, what, he's an actor? No, he's a spy. He's a boxer with a spy. Right. Oh, Wilson's the spy. He's the famous boxer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think in Showtime, he's the actor. What yeah, and then cop? he just starts becoming a cop, but he wants to be a cop, and Robert De Niro's trying yeah, to be a cop. They're kind of the same movie, pretty much. Yeah, they are. Except one's more spy work, and the other one's more cop work. It's more yellow it's very, it's very much like Jackie Chan, where, like, you rush hour with Chris Tucker. He's like, okay, now go be play Cowboys with Owen Wilson. He's like, all right. So, like, buddy comedies start to become a thing and he's just jumping into that same kind of role which by the way both of those movies just like the other ones you can watch it once or twice you'll never rent it you'll never buy it but they're watchable yeah they're both usa eddie murphy pretty much owns usa network right now is what i'm hearing it's pretty good good for him um also the haunted mansion Ooh, i almost made that my worst was the haunted mansion uh, we'll get the fuck out of here i like it i like the ride too at disney one of my favorite rides. You're gonna all fuck off. I, really <laughs> I get a little nervous. If it wasn't for Pirates of the Caribbean, that would probably be my scariest ride. If it wasn't Shit for the just Pir turned you. If it wasn't for the Pirates of the Caribbean, ah. it must have never been made a movie. They must have just been walking by with a notebook okay. going, all right, what other rides can we make into movies? Space Mountain? Okay, cool. We'll do Space Mountain one. Teacup ride? Got Jungle Cruise coming out, and I'm excited. They've got what? Jungle Cruise. 
Oh, and I forgot about Jungle Cruise. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I'll i watch it because the rest of the ride movies have been pretty good. I watched that? Pirates. I watched that the other day instead of an Eddie Murphy movie. And then, what? Yeah, you heard what? me. Why would haunted you? house or not haunted, haunted mansion? Yeah, I like that. Movie. Yeah, not me. I couldn't. Uh, I, well, I didn't. Again, I wouldn't have. You're wrong. We're used to it. They have. I mean, if I had kids with me, I would enjoy it more. But uh, I've got kids. I enjoyed it. You have kids in your basement. Uh, Jungle Cruise to me looks yeah, a lot, and they like... didn't get to watch it. They were bad. <laughs> Stay chained up for another two weeks. Um, Jungle Cruise to me looks a lot like The Mummy with uh, Brendan Fraser or like The Rundown when Sean William Scott's going to get uh, the treasure, El Gato. Yeah. And uh, he's going with The Rock. So I watched and I was like, okay, it's an adventure, fun movie. Immediately, you probably will get my money, even if it's probably streamed or however I have to watch it. I probably will watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it. 100% I'll watch it. Yeah, and... Uh, well the Rock, that's all I need I can't believe I forgot the name of the actress, the main actress in it. She's awesome. Emily Blunt. Yeah, really good. I really enjoy her. So I'll be great to see her in more of like enjoy a kind of a comedic. Don't even know her name. It's true. It's true. I mean, my bad. She's in. Uh, she's in a lot of good movies. But I Edge mean, of Tomorrow, fantastic. A lot of people know it from. Mary Poppins, Quiet Place. Yeah, she's in Mary a lot. I'm a, I'm a fan of hers. <laughs> Mr. No. Church? I don't know Mr. Church. That's another one someone just mentioned. I'm not sure what Mr. that one is. Church. Is that Dream Girls? Ooh, maybe. Could be. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Because I don't... I don't remember that movie. I didn't like it. It's not my what type I mean, movie, though. People are talking about Eddie Murphy, and they're like, man, I want him to make this movie, or I want him to come back to stand-up. He's talking about recently coming back and doing a special. What I want him to do is get into, to get back into music. I mean, I want to party all the time. It's my jam. <laughs> I want to party all the time, party all the time. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy that he's saying that song. Woo, man. Love that song. Play it every Friday. Drive on forward. I play that at every party I'm at. <laughs> Let's get it. Oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Church. Like, I've never heard of Mr. Church. I ain't going to lie, John. Also, Beverly Hills Cop, to me, is better than 48 Hours. Ooh, that's when he started trying to be a big actor, uh, Nick Nolte. Yeah. yeah, he tried. They tried to make, like, a Lethal Weapon-esque movie. They're trying to get it going. Yeah. Sometimes it's just so close to something else that I don't really – I'm not super fond of it. Uh, I want us to get into our favorites. Our favorites. I want us to get into it, but I want to go first, if that's all right with you. Yeah, so that that's we fine. Can... I thought we were to talk about our favorites, but yeah. Well, briefly, but I, I want right, to get that's more fair. brief. We didn't talk brief enough about it. You right, you're right. <laughs> I can't talk about Shrek anymore. <laughs> you fuck yourself. I can't do. I can't do. I said I had a strong drink. I didn't say I was fucking drinking a fifth. Come on, man. You can drink a Kool Aid and still love Shrek, you shit. Uh, just, but this much. That's why I love his Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Give me that great kind. We touched on this very briefly, um, but my favorite one that I have rewatched that you've mentioned uh, recently, March fifteenth, coming to America two. The sequel is coming out. Uh, my favorite of his is coming to America, and him and Arsenio Hall are awesome. This McDonald's Samuel Jackson running in the door. With the broomstick, he takes him out. Uh, Coming to America is my favorite movie. I think it's his best work. He plays like six or seven different characters, which I think might have been his downfall later in his career. But that movie is the most well, quote. Got to it. I mean, you're right. Maybe he, you think he flew too close to the sun on. Uh, he did. He's like, oh, you know what? I'm having a tough go right now with my movies. I know. I'll dress up as a woman. That'll uh, get some. Yeah, Nutty Professor, he, like, he started figuring it out. He's like, you know what? I can do this all the time. And no. Mm -mm. Yeah. The glue starts like, every character in the movie. That's what I'll do. <laughs> They'll love me then. Yeah. Uh, Soul Glow, where they lean back on the sofa, and then they pull their head up, and like their jerry curls and stain the back of it. God, I love that movie. I got to rewatch it. I'll have to rewatch it before it comes out, the sequel does. I rewatched it this week. It is a good movie. I do really enjoy it. Like, yeah, I shit on you for not picking Shrek as your best or Mulan. 
But coming to America, I don't hate that answer to be honest. It is a really good movie. It's fun. I, I mean, watched I, it again this week. <laughs> I mean, I, I just I had to say it, especially one that showcases his talents and all these different uh, personas and characters he's playing and making it interesting. The landlord who kicks him out, he's like, "This place is a shithole. You'll love it." He's like, "We'll take it." James Earl Jones plays the king that comes in of uh, Zamunda, Zamunda, something like that. The name of the Zamunda, yeah, Zamunda. Awesome, fantastic. Uh, really like it. Zamunda. And they use the speaker to like talk across the dinner table. That's how big it was. <laughs> yeah, so funny. Arsenio Hall is like the guy that was made to be the prince. He's like, we should go back now. He's like, we're not going back until we're done. He's like. Ah, like he sees rose petals and everything else. He loves. He's all excited. He remember, he's like, "We're yeah. fucked." They lay down. They lay down rose petals at his feet wherever he goes. Back in Zamunda. That's right. His money has a picture of his dad on it. There's very yeah. few things I don't like about this movie. I I thought it was all pretty good. McDonald's made me laugh. Her dad, who's greedy as hell, is like, "You got to marry this other guy. He's got a fortune." Not realizing that Eddie Murphy's literally a prince. That's well, some people, you know, they don't look beyond the money. I mean, everyone I date feels that way. <laughs> They're looking right past it. Uh, what music video did he appear in in 1992, 93 era? I don't fucking know. That was two or three. Mm, I'm not sure either. I would assume a Michael Jackson jam and jam if I I'm had to get. Janet Jackson. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Well, see, now we have to wait on a comment from a stranger and see what happens there. Yeah, we could. It's John's hugs. Yeah, he'll, he'll be right there. Yeah, John's are all time. We can talk about my favorite in the meantime, Tricks. What? What? I haven't yeah, heard Shrek's. about it. What is he playing it? What is it? Uh, what's it about? So Shrek's the ogre, bro. He's the lovable okay. ogre who WWE style wrestles some motherfucking guards. Can okay. a chance to go save a princess for Lord oh. Farquaad, played by John Lithgow and Cameron Diaz. I like him. And he is accompanied by a talking donkey. The talkingest damn donkey we've ever seen. Hmm. <laughs> Dude, I love Shrek. I love Shrek 1. I love Shrek 2. I know you do. This is not new. I fucking new. love him. I, it's not new. To we, we did our DreamWorks episode. I think we spent a half hour on it. Right? I do miss Eames right now because I need someone else just basking in that Shrek glory with me. No. Mm -mm. I mean, nope. I should have brought a parfait onto the podcast, but I know it's not proper to eat on camera. should have brought an onion. <laughs> Ogre's got nah, layer. Not like but everybody loves a parfait. <laughs> uh, you want to hear, I have a Shrek fun fact that you may not know. I did come prepared because I know my co-host. Uh, do you know who's supposed to originally voice Shrek instead of Mike Myers? Chris Farley. Chris Farley. Chris Farley had essentially done the entire script just about, but had not done enough touch-ups and everything else. Afterwards, Chris Farley sadly passed away. We're all very big Chris Farley fans on this podcast. Mike Myers came in. Like the one actor we don't make jokes about. <laughs> He's too precious. And uh, Mike Myers came in. Ran the gauntlet, did the whole thing, got just about done where they were going to seal the script, seal the can, done with the movie. And he goes, I want to redo it all with the Scottish accent. And they were like, uh, yeah, that'd be a lot of money. We're not going to do that. And he lobbied for it. And he got it. And apparently he knows what he's talking about because we're on strike five? Uh, yeah, there's rumors for a Shrek five. Oh, my God. It's crazy. I mean, well, I am a fan Cameron of Shrek. Diaz needs work, and Eddie Murphy, he might. I don't know. See how good Coming to America too is. I mean, I mean Mike Myers needs work. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, he doesn't Dude. if he's making Shrek. People were like, "Where's Mike Myers? I haven't seen him in forever." You're like, yes, you have. You've probably seen him swimming in his boat made of diamonds because of all the Shrek money. That's fair. That and Wayne's World. I mean, he's doing Super Bowl commercials now with Cardi B. Okay. That was, uh, dude, if you go watch the Wayne's World commercial for the Super Bowl, you will see two characters. One looks just like he did 30 years ago, and one that looks like a monster. And I'll let you decide which of those is which, 
and you'll know right away. You ain't wrong. Cardi B looks bad compared to those two. <laughs> Uh, Shrek's is great to me. I like fantasy genre. I love all the jokes they make about it. I love the dragon is up there. The donkey falls in love with the dragon, which I'm sure you love. We should probably talk about Eddie Murphy's parts in Shrek as best we can. Well, let's there is talk about how it's Antonio Banderas' best movie ever. Why? Easily. We can't jump to Ooh. Antonio Banderas. And boo. Do we uh, did a five minute talk about John Lithgow. I'll talk about Antonio <laughs> Banderas, who's actually in this movie. As well. Mm hmm. Yep. So you'll fuck yourself. Well, I feel like we just talked about Puss in Boots. You guys can check it out on our DreamWorks episode. I'm a huge we fan. This is one of my favorite DreamWorks movies. Don't I was I surprised. You lie about what my favorite Eddie Murphy movie is just so we can talk about that one more? No, I don't lie to the people. I may yell at them. I may be a dick to them, but I ain't going to lie. It's not who I'm about. All right. Okay. I agree. Damn uh, <laughs> Would you watch a standalone donkey movie? Is that how yes. good he is the character? That was a fast yeah. answer. <laughs> the only one I wouldn't watch is Princess Fiona. She can go fuck herself. <laughs> I wasn't mad at her character, but I don't think I've I seen didn't it. hate it. I, just, I mean, all she's four worse, though. If you had to pick a worst, it's her. Is I, she in all four of them? I don't. It's just probably the fifth if they make one. Phoenix work. I, I don't know if I've seen them all. I think I've seen two or three. I know there's one where you don't uh, need to. Just watch okay. Shrek 1 and 2. That's it. Okay. There is no third and fourth. You don't need to watch Justin Timberlake come in. Okay. Fuck that. That's not the, horrible, but Jesus. That's the one I remember is the Justin Timberlake is the Prince one. And I remember ah. going, you, I'm, you know what? I'm just not your audience. It's not a big deal. This isn't for me. And I just. The main storyline in that movie sucked. A lot of great side jokes, side mm -hmm. fucking storylines there. Oh, dude. But awesome. The main story movie. was just dog shit. Dude, I need a hero dude. when they bake a giant gingerbread man to attack the castle. There's... First of all, that's Shrek 2, you dumb piece of shit. I don't know. They all one movie to me. Whoa, it's not whoa, like whoa. there's Shrek a giant character. Two, you can say that too. Yeah, they go they go to far, far away, Shrek 2. Visit her parents. But then you meet Puss <laughs> in Boots. <laughs> I like that uh, Prince Charming. They made jokes about Jamie Lannister, the guy that played him, how much he looks like him, and they constantly like free. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I like Shrek. I I watched it way late because I thought it was overrated. Then I watched, and I, realized, I watched wow, it way late too, and early. And yes, I thought it was really good. Do I think it's Eddie Murphy's best movie? I do not. Do I think it's yes, his best? Do. I and love underrated. Hey, Eddie Murphy's best movie is Shrek. Comma, move on. I mean, hey, that's a real problem, Amanda. Blue color, red thorns. It's hard when you're colorblind. It's very hard. We got Jordan checking I in. I asked a woman the other day at Costco for some color help. I ended up calling Steven. <laughs> you're just FaceTiming somebody? Hey, I don't know what Magenta I did. is. Like, that's, that's not a lie either. I had to FaceTime Steven because I knew he'd answer his phone. That's so funny. I like that boulder. That's a nice boulder. That's a nice boulder. He can fly. He can fly. He can talk. Yes, yeah, get him to shut up. That's the trick. <laughs> yeah, I can't picture Shrek without a Scottish accent. I love Farley, but I can't picture him without a Scottish accent. Right? I think he saw something. He did the same thing in uh, I, I Married an Axe Murderer and he his dad. Oh, oh yeah. I remember that movie. God, it's funny. I watched that movie a lot as a kid. Not as watchable when you're an adult, though. Well, I mean, hopefully your tastes change a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, you could still like a lot of the stuff you liked as a kid, but hopefully you're not still, like, super, super down. I shouldn't say that because I think if Street Sharks was on, I'd probably kill a whole season of it. I mean, there's a couple shows yeah, right. that... 100%. I mean, AIM still loves Mortal Kombat. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great, great. The fact that we're 50 minutes in this podcast, I don't know if he's watching the whole thing, but he hasn't said it. I'm disappointed in him. Disappointed. Oh, he didn't say it? Oh, man. He we didn't say it. He had the best it. opportunity to combat Mortal Kombat. Damn it. And he we were didn't. so close. <laughs> but I brought it up for him in his honor. Great. Well done. Fantastic. <laughs> 
Uh, I wanted to ask you a question and go back to a little bit of his roots. We talked about his stand-up, Delirious and Raw, which are fantastic, on Netflix, but it is 80 stand-up, so prepare to be offended. Uh, out of the Saturday Night Live cast that has been there and gone, you have a lot of really good members that came out of that cast. You have like Dan Aykroyd, who was in the movie with them. You have Steve Martin. Um, I mean, John Belushi's probably a guy that would have crushed if he didn't pass away. Uh, Chris Farley, David Spade, Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider. Who was your favorite guy that has left Saturday Night Live that's gone on to do movies and films and stuff like that, TV shows? If Who's one that you would choose that you're like, wow, this guy's really crushing it? I mean, well, it was Chris Farley, so, you know, everything. Dang. He died. That's not bad. I would bad. say Sandler after that. I mean, yeah. I know Sandler gets shit on now, which Eddie Murphy does too. It's hard. But it's I hard. love Waterboy. I love Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison. Absolutely. Mr. Deeds is actually not that great. I just watched that the other day to fall asleep. It's got it's got its parts that I like. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, sneaky. Big Daddy. He's got a lot of good movies. I would, I would probably go Adam Sandler. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. I, I like Dan Aykroyd a lot, uh, but I can't put him on the same he's pedestal. He's a good supporting actor. I mean, it's weird how much they kind of take the same path. Steve Martin came out, did The Jerk, great comedy. He did like one or two others, and then he started doing family films. That's just kind of what he turned into. Cheaper by the same dozen, yeah. Exactly. And he started doing it with Eddie Murphy, started doing the same idea, started doing kind of like family movies. I wonder if at a certain point they just realized, oh, these are the roles that I could handle. Or if they're just getting more money to do it. I'm not sure. Like you said, maybe that's it. Well, they have kids, and then they want their kids to see their movies. Hmm. So they make family movies. I don't know if that's true. I just assume, to be honest. Well, I know that a couple people like took roles in Spider-Man because their kids asked him to. Tommy Lee Jones played Two-Face because his son said, I know the character. I love that character. You need to play him. He's like, all right. Because he wasn't going to do it until his kids asked him to. So I'm sure that plays a part where they're like, hey, I got this awesome role where I'm going to do this. So I'm going to work with Tom Brady. I love Tom Brady. Okay, then I'll go do it. You'll get to meet him. What? I'm sure. I, dude, as a dad, trying to impress your kids has to be super important. So I'm sure that decides Tom Brady. I mean, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. You want to start that up? Because no, because you got me agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it's not. It's the one thing we agree on, and it's not even movie related or Eddie Murphy related. <laughs> Unless he's secretly a Bucks fan, and I don't know it. He is for this podcast episode. Absolutely. Damn right, Tom Brady. I love Who's Eddie Murphy. Lost Murphy. half our viewership. So what is the movie that you would recommend you're underrated that you want people to watch if they have not seen it? Because we're getting towards the end, and I wanted to try to reiterate what we're going to do. It's Shrek. Shrek. You can't name Shrek as all of your categories, dude. You I didn't. Do it's, not, it's, not, it's not overrated, and it's not as worst. Uh, actually, I went Dr. Doolittle. Underrated Dr. Doolittle. Wow. Yeah, I actually like Dr. Doolittle quite a bit. Wow. I'm not okay. saying it's better than a lot of his movies, but I think it's up there with him. I mean, right when he jumped his family movies, I'm with you. It is watchable. It's not terrible. Daddy Daycare for me is another one where you thought it'd be terrible and it was actually not bad. Yeah, that's probably why I liked it more because I thought it would be dog shit. I want to do a shot. I want to do a shot real quick before we thank our uh, our group helping us out and to uh, to our fallen soldier Eames, Jordan. We're sorry that you're not here, buddy, and uh, hope you recover from those Waller's wounds. And take care. But uh, I'm gonna give it to you for Shrek. You've persuaded me. Uh, you tell me what movies to watch. I'm gonna try to watch. You've mentioned it enough. Apparently, I can be very easily bullied into doing something. So you let me know what I need to watch for Shrek, and I will try it out. I think I've seen those movies maybe like twice each. I thought they were very funny, but I was like, that's good. But apparently, I need to get more love for them. Yeah, Shrek, man. It's pro it, They're both probably my favorite one and two animated movies of all time. Okay, all right. I'll say, I'll Light it up, watch watching Shrek. And yes, uh, also, Bowfinger, one of Eddie Murphy's more famous movies. Oh, Bowfinger, that's right. They're Bowfinger, yeah. With uh, Steve Martin. Up. I thought we'd bring it up real quick. That's a pretty good movie. I do I do like that movie. That would maybe be on the underrated category for me as well. 
<laughs> Dude, that's true. I forgot about that. That's another, yeah. He's playing out his face like this, and he looks like another one where he's playing a different character than himself. I think he's an actual actor, and then he found the guy that's just a lookalike. They trained to do the role and make it look like he was in it. Yeah. So. I like yeah, when he's like, a, how, we have to film a scene where we have to run across this highway, and it's a real highway. And he's like, how do I do it without getting run over? Like, you just run. They're all stunt drivers. Don't worry about it. They just do a big loop, and they come by. They'll miss you. He's like, oh, that's how you do it. Okay. And he gets out there, and he's just running for his life. And they're honking. And he's just, he's, ah, and he's running across the street. He gets to the other side. Ah, and they're like, all right, that was great. You did a great job. Ah, lens was on. We got to redo it. Okay, you ready? Get to the other side. We got to restart this. And he's like, oh, okay. And he just heads back. That's the only scene I remember from that movie. But it's funny. That's the scene I remember, too. <laughs> I mean, I remember it being a pretty decent movie, but it's one of his more famous ones too. But I couldn't go to the podcast without talking about it, so I brought it up. So, yeah, got to talk about it. Eddie Murphy has, you know what? The thing I like about it is I bet most people have uh, different opinions than us, which is super fine. Um, Brandon loves Shrek. He assumes everyone else loves Shrek, and maybe you do, maybe you absolutely do. Uh, Coming to America for me is my favorite. I had a couple people message me and say, "Delirious by far is the best thing he's ever done, including movies." A lot of people love his stand-up. I hope he gets back to stand-up. He talked to Kevin Hart about it, and he mentioned on his last um, special that Kevin Hart did. That would be very cool to see what he'd have to say now. I don't know if he'd be as edgy, though. But Dave Chappelle, I mean, he came back after a hiatus, and he fucking killed it. God, he was great. Love Dave Chappelle. Me too. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with us. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about it's going to be our final episode of the month, and we're pretty stoked. We're going to be talking about Chadwick Boseman and... Our dude. Oh, you waiting for me? I was. We all are. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> there you go. What did you guys pay for? That professionalism. <laughs> Sweet tie-ins. Sweet segues. Uh, smooth transitions. That's what we are. We're super excited to be talking about it next week. We hope to have Jordan back after his terrible, terrible beehive accident. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys stay classy, San Diego. We appreciate you. Stay fresh cheese bags. You brought that oh, back. That no. was all you. <laughs>